Hello, welcome back to Big G's Real Road Channel. This is Big G, your host, and today I'm bringing you layout update number 38. I'm going to also let you know where I've been for the last five to six months. Also, on that, I want to take this moment and apologize for not putting a video out or spending enough time in the layout room to bring you a full update and a lot of projects going on. But I've also got something to share with you as far as two new items that I've picked up. So without further ado, let's go ahead and turn the camera around and get started. All right, this is where we last did most of our work as far as what you guys have seen on video. And with that, as many of you know, I own my own landscape company. And with that, springtime sprung, summertime's here, temperature's been great. We've grown in business. We have divided and conquered with a couple crews now. So expanded the business a little bit hopefully a little bit more time in the layout room again and one of the things that we enjoy in our off season or any chance we get is to actually go and ride trains but not in the variety of these trains i'll get a little closer and i'll show you what i'm talking about as we take a look I like riding roller coaster trains. So, back earlier this year, we went to Universal. That's me and my uncle on Velocicoaster down in Orlando at Universal Orlando. That was us this past fall. Um, that was actually me and my wife. I'm sorry, not this past fall. That was actually two years ago on Maverick at Cedar Point up in Sandusky, Ohio. This was years ago. This was actually me, my wife, and my little girl um, riding rock and roller coaster. You can see my little girl looks terrified, but she got off of it, and we rode that thing like six times in a row. She had a ball with it. This was... Us this past fall at Cedar Point riding Steel Vengeance. And as you can see, I like taking funny videos or photos and capturing them and then buying the picture and bringing it home. Then on our Orlando trip, we actually went over to Tampa and rode Iron Gwazi. So if you like roller coasters, so do I. And these are just some of the videos or some of the moments that I've captured in time over the last several years. And as you can tell, I've never really had a space to put things up. But I've also got um, Kings Island that I need to put some photos up on the wall. So this will this wall will actually be growing in the near future. Uh, I've also got some stuff from Dollywood because we just went to Dollywood not too long ago to ride some more roller coasters. So hopefully um, most of that wall will be covered and then I will probably expand on over into that corner with some roller coaster pictures. So that is part of the, I'm sorry, I've not been in the layout room part. Um, but I've also, to add on to that, not only have I been riding the roller coasters, uh, like I said, I've expanded the business a little bit. We've done a little, we are doing quite a few more yards, so that's taken me out of the layout room um, by the time I get done in the afternoon. I like to spend some time with family and just haven't dedicated a whole lot of time in here and then another part of it is i've just been lazy so i need to get motivated and get back into the layout room do a little cleaning and give you guys some more material but i do have one other section uh, i'll move over there real quick turn the camera back on and i'll show you what little bit of an update i do have for you on this one be right back all right on this end this is where I told you on the last two videos that I was planning on expanding and doing, not really expanding, but just finishing the scenery. 
as you can see, it's kind of turned into a catch-all. I have done a little bit of work here, but where I've started to focus, and this is probably my most scariest project I've ever done on a railroad, uh, mainly because these bridges were straight, and I've turned them into a curved bridge. Very proud of how they are coming out, but I've got a little bit more work done. I've got the code 55 that I've got to get into my other code 70 rail. But I have the curves pretty much molded onto the track there, or the track bent to the curve section. And then I have the bridges kind of curved underneath as well. Got a little bit more work to do to get it in place and get it actually mounted up. But what few times I have been in the layout room, this is where I've been focusing my work on. And I've got to get in here and get these towers. As you can see, I've kind of cut this outer tower and I've marked it up. Got it cut. I've got to get in there and put the other corner piece in over here to make this tower complete. I'm also thinking one of the things that I've done, I'm going to have the bridge abutment over here. Of course, this will be flushed up, um, leveled out. Of course, you can see the level over there. I'll get that leveled out, but I'll put the bridge abutment in. Um, I'm working on those as well. And then I'll start my scenery profile. But I'm thinking what I'm going to do is probably come down and instead of going all the way down, with Rock Bluff, which I intended to do at first. I think what I'm going to do is actually come down part of the way and then start cutting in and actually split these towers up a little bit. And that way I don't have to hopefully do a whole lot of work in there because this part of the project is where I'm really stalling and what's really got me held up at the moment. I get in here, I'll get started, and then I get frustrated, and then I walk away. So... This is what's been my main time killer and why I haven't put too many videos out here lately. So hopefully I will get motivated, get these completed. As you can see, I've got that one corner piece sitting in there, but there's quite the gap there. So just got some engineering on my side to do, which I knew this was going to be the pain of the project. Um, just got to get in there, figure out what I need to do, how I need to do it mold a couple pieces and get the bins the way I want them or the bents. Once I get that figured out, everything else should go pretty easy. Um, leveling will be easy. As you can tell, I've taken a little bit of balsaw wood and started some wood strips and started making some footers to kind of level up. Uh, that one over there has already fell off of it, but I'm doing that and then that will help me level the bridge up. So I'll get that completely flush and level. But let's take the track off for a second, take a look at it. So that you can kind of see the bridge is kind of in place with no track on it. One of the things I like about these bridges is that you can actually see through the bridges themselves. So it's gonna make for I think it's gonna make for some very cool scenery shots. Um, when I do get the scenery in, but I kind of wanted to tackle the last hardest project that I had before I really went crazy on this peninsula. And this is definitely the most time consuming part of the pro whole layout that I've done. And like I said, just got me a little frustrated, um, and taking some of the motivation out, but I don't want to stop at this point. I wanted to complete this, and then once I get these done, the scenery part, like I said, that's second nature to me. It comes easy. I enjoy it. Shouldn't be a problem at all. Um, that's part of the process that I really like. But thought I would bring you guys in, let you see kind of what I'm doing, kind of where everything is at the current moment. And then, like I said, I just want to apologize mainly just because I know it's been five five months or so before I, or since I put a video out and I owe you guys a little bit more than that or better than that. I also want to take this time to say a very 
big thank you to every one of you that are watching the video, every one of you that has subscribed to the channel already. If you haven't became a scribe, uh, subscriber of my channel, please hit that subscribe button down there. It helps every YouTuber out. Um, subscribe, turn the notifications on, hit the like button, leave a comment. It helps our videos out and it's helped me out tremendously. Matter of fact, I am on the verge of getting my first YouTube check. Um, I almost hit the threshold. That's right. I've hit my thousand subscribers. I've hit the 4,000 watched hours. I've done everything I can to monetize my channel. So I couldn't have done that without any of you guys here or gals. So definitely appreciate each and every one of you watching. Thank you for tuning in, listening to this fat guy ramble. But I definitely appreciate it. And let's go ahead and unveil the two new items that I've got. And then I will let you guys go and get back to your day. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in a second. Alright, last year I went to the InScale convention over in Nashville. And I placed the pre-order. I've got half of that pre-order in. The other half is coming, I believe, as of right now. Showing October or November, I do believe, for the other part of that pre-order. But let's go ahead and see what came in from Scale Trains. I've got the package already open. I've taken a look at them, but I want to show you guys on camera also. There is for their SD40-2s coming in. These are for their Spring 2023. You can see what they have offered there in their InScale collection. But let's see what else they put in the box, the main part of the box. That's right, I've got two brand new C44-9Ws from GE. These were on pre-order, took them um, a little while to come in, but I'm very happy. I've not taken them out of the box and ran them. I have taken them out of the box or j just to kind of inspect them. But this is probably out of all the engine paint jobs in the world that has ever been done. These are by far probably my favorite paint schemes don't know just something about them give me just a second and I'll unbox both of them have them on the track for you so you can kind of take a look at them real quick I'm sure you've seen plenty of them but I will unveil the two that I have all right here are the two scale train engines out of the box these are both with sound I don't have the power to the layout but I do want to take a moment, do kind of a quick walk around. They do have the windshield wipers there on the front windows. All the handrails are painted up for the safety, including with the safety yellow, including the um, ladder rails on the front. I just love the detailing that they've got on there, including all the handrails being with that yellow grab irons. I've got them all over the place. Very highly detailed. Even like the venting that they've got on top. Overall, just a very nice design. Uh, like I said, I've not had the chance to run either one of them. But I've got 628 there. And I have this one down here. The other side of it is what it looks like. This one is 644. And then let's compare these with the Cato units that they have. I've got the number 600 in it. As far as the details, the scale trains far superior wise running. I can't tell you just yet on that. But a lot more work to do on that one to make it look as good as what the Scale Trains version looks like. Let's kind of get them kind of in the same shot so you can kind of see. 
just overall, I think I like the scale trains, which everybody knows scale trains puts a whole lot more work in as far as what they look like prototypically and they put out a very highly detailed model but when it comes to running everybody usually goes with those Kados or Kados um, and I cannot knock them at all the detail may not be there but as far as running Kado or Kado however you want to pronounce it they usually are the gold standard as far as running so very happy but I do enjoy my scale trains that I run as well. So far, I've been lucky and gotten great engines from them. I have no doubt that these two will run smoothly as well. If not, I will contact them, and I've heard their quality control is very good, or that their customer service is good, and that they will take care of their customers. So... Hopefully before too long, I'll have a video out with these two running. We'll see if we can't, um, unlike Gomez Adams, we'll see if we can't make, or make sure that the bridge is not out when they're running. So, one last thing I want to show you guys before I log off. Um, and I want to say that I hope it will not be five, six months down the road before I put another video out. But stay tuned for new videos, and I'll bring one other item over here to let you see um, what I've done with it. Alright, the entire time on the video, I've actually had these containers stacked up on the back side back here. And I'm going to use them here in just a second for visual um, aid. But this is a container train, or... A set that I've actually done uh, back when I did my last video I think I did these right before or right after that video was published but I went in and I've actually weathered the containers I've weathered the trains themselves or the cars got them all done up and I actually posted these on some social media but I've not shared them with my YouTube um, crowd. And I wanted to take a second and put those on there. And show you what I did. Including that graffiti on that last car that I've got. But got them dirty. Got them rusted up. Got some streak marks on some of it. Zoom in a little bit more on that graffiti. And no, I did not hand do that graffiti. I actually, those are some uh, stickers that I got from Blair Line Products, I think. And got those on there. So before you comment and say, oh, you can do graffiti really well, it's actually a decal. But I definitely appreciate anything on there that you say as far as I did great graffiti, but I can't take the credit for it. Give me a second and I'll flip this one around and then I'll grab some of those cars so that you can see up close the difference between what they look like new versus the weathered. All right, this is the other side weathered up. And some of these are from the Kato or Kato um, stack cars the three and the five car sets actually i think i've only got the three cars on these but that's something that i'm planning on and that one's sitting crooked where i just turned it around my apologies on that but here we go it's properly seated in there hopefully going down the road or the down the track you'll never see one leaning like that if so better call and let somebody know because more than likely they're going to be losing that off the train but here is what these two cars look like side by side I fade it and put some streaks on them and hopefully you don't ever see one going down three stacks like that but let's zoom in a little closer you can kind of see the fading and the rust streaks that I've put on it didn't want to do a whole lot to each one of them but 
one of each one have their own little personality definitely streaked up quite a bit even did the tops of them you can see what a fresh top looks like and then that one's very dulled out got some rain streaks and some rust streaks on it and then i've got one of the or six may six here is probably one of my most heavy weather heavily weathered ones and then let's put a new one for comparison you can definitely tell the difference there between the two and when you put one of the weathered engines in front of that little train i had them running around last time i had the layout going i had a i'll show you the engine i had in front of it and it's just makes it look so much better on the layout when your cars are weathered up a little bit even if they're just lightly weathered just takes the toyness out of them or the toy likeness so this was the engine that i had in front of it running on the layout the last time i was running and like you said or like i said it's heavily weathered up and then pulling those in behind it just looks amazing looks like something you'd actually see out on the real railroad versus pulling it with one of these norfolk southerns right out of the box there's the difference between the two so big night and day difference um went out and when I actually weathered this a lot of people are going to say that's way too much weathering on it but I actually weathered that it's a scale train as well and I've weathered that to one of the pictures that I've actually googled uh of that engine so it actually there's some pictures out on google of that engine and it's heavily weathered like that so I enjoy weathering it as much as I can and I try to look at real photos whenever I'm weathering just like I did with the containers um, went in to look how they streak where the rust forms at and most of the time the rust will form right around where they grab with the cranes to take them off it's where most of the rust will form sometimes you'll get them on the trailer uh, doors I've worked around some containers in my previous employer's um, time of need. We've had some on the parking lot, as many as 20 or 30 of them uh, for different events. So I've been around them. I know what they look like in person. And then also to be able to Google. It's a great tool when you get ready to start doing weathering. Um, can definitely pull up some content and be able to look at it for reference points and reference um, art so that you can imitate it but without further ado just want to say thank you to each and every one of you hit that like button leave me a comment i'll try to respond and thank you each and every one for tuning in and stay safe out there see you on the next video